Hello, I am going to answer your Q&A today that I wrote on my Instagram story a while ago that I wanted to do a Q&A that was work centred, so about my work specifically as a cook and an influencer and I had really really good questions from you, there were loads of similar ones, um, so I've like put them together, morphed them so that I'm answering all the topics that you talked about but not necessarily answering every single question that I got because there were quite a few. I feel like this covers all the things that people are generally interested to know about. Sorry, I, found, I sound quite coldy. I feel like I'm off the back of like a mini cold. I'm actually really good at not getting ill that often. But over the last few days, I was feeling a bit run down and had a really chilled, quiet weekend. It's Monday today and I feel like that helped with me feeling like I was recovered, but I still sound quite bunged up. I'm gonna try and not make this too long because I feel like Q&As can go on forever, but also I feel like it's quite nice to give some context and background to everything that you see me do on social media, so hopefully this will help. I'm also gonna grab some water because I'm gonna be talking quite a lot. In my mug, which, my glass mug, which I love, it's from Hay. And I noticed that it has a little chip in it, which is really, really sad. No, maybe it doesn't. Anyway, so I'm getting distracted already. So I've split the questions up into four sections. The first section is background. Second section is influencing. Third section is cooking. And the fourth section is everything. So it's a bit miscellaneous and a bit of everything. Yeah, as I say, if I haven't answered your question, hopefully I will have answered a form of your question that helps give an answer that might be useful to you. So the first section is background. Um, the first question is, how did you get into cooking? Did you do a specific course? And um, love your vibe and recipes. Yeah, so I studied social anthropology, so completely unrelated to cooking. After I finished uni, I went into restaurant marketing and then I did a, did a bit of food and drinks marketing. So it's always food based. But at the time, I didn't really know that I wanted to cook specifically. And I also didn't really have an understanding that there were jobs that you could do that related to food that weren't just working in a restaurant. And so I felt like restaurant marketing was a way that I could get into it without cooking in a restaurant, which wasn't something I really wanted to do. So I did work in London for about a year and I'm sorry if you've heard this story because I've said it a few times, but I just didn't really like living in London. I think I was 22 slash 23 and I just felt like I didn't really fit into the lifestyle that my friends and people around me were living at that time. Didn't really feel that need to go to the pub every weekend and get drunk and hang out with big groups of people and I didn't, I was commuting an hour and 20 minutes every day for my job and there was just things that didn't really, I, I was kind of like, is this it? This doesn't feel very good and I was also just not in a very good place and um, I was getting really interested in soil health and farming and baking and, and therefore cooking as well. And so I started hosting supper clubs, which literally this was 2019, so it was really like not a thing then, but I literally had four to six people who were my friends or family and I got them to pay eight pounds to cover the cost of ingredients. And then I would cook them a meal that was either all from British ingredients or all from British veg. And I would tell them stories about the ingredients and where I'd got them from and I would make a cocktail at the beginning. So I understood early that I wanted to cook. Then when I kind of realized that I didn't have to be in London, I went back to live with my parents in Wales and I was really lucky that they had hospitality businesses so I could work for them, which was amazing because I got to really understand the depths of these um, businesses and like how they function behind the scenes and while I was working with for them I was also growing vegetables in Wales um, I was learning to bake bread I was foraging I was doing all the stuff that's basically gone on to form the background of what I do now and during that time for six weeks I went to cooking school in Ireland at a place called Ballymaloo which is an incredible place that I was so lucky to go to where they basically like teach you a lot about obviously classical cooking skills but it's also about vegetables um, farms and all the stuff that I was interested in in terms of sustainability and then basically went back to Wales lived there for 
almost six years in total, but I was always coming back to London. I was hosting supper clubs. I was doing a lot of back and forth. And then in October 2023, no, October 2023, three yeah I moved back to London and the supper clubs and obviously social media and stuff has kind of formed now the like base of what I do so hopefully that's a bit of a background um and the next question related to this was how did you make the jump from employment to freelancing I was really lucky because this was really gradual for me so I was technically freelance almost from the beginning of my career, even when I was still living in London, I was on a freelance salary because I was working for an independent business. So I was freelance so I could technically leave when I wanted. I could take days to do other stuff if I wanted. And then when I worked for my parents, I was also freelance. And then I came to London and I was also freelance. So I never had to like make a jump, but I will say that I guess the time where I really, like moved from working for someone to working for myself was October 2022 and that did feel kind of scary because it was suddenly like oh I have to actually find ways to make money now and I have to make sure that enough money is coming in every month and like is this money going to come in am I going to get paid am I going to get jobs I have to chase invoices I have to do this so I guess that was scary um and I feel like it still is scary, like being solo and being reliant on jobs coming in to make money is scary. But um, I feel like, you know, a piece of advice on that is just like doing your side hustle for as long as you can until you're really confident with doing it as a paid job. Um, next, I'm gonna move on to influencing. That was definitely the part of this Q and A that you guys were the most interested in, which I totally get because it's very intriguing as a topic. Um, so the first question is tips for people to start posting on social media i want to start creating food content and sharing my passion for cooking but i'm embarrassed i'm nervous do you have any tips so this was a question that was asked loads um and i feel like number one i still get embarrassed 100 percent. like i still i f almost feel like the more followers you have the more nerve-wracking it is when i had like 5,000 followers or less, I was probably a bit more like blase about what I was posting, whereas the more people are watching, it kind of feels more scary. Um, I would say go and just start and try and block out the feelings of embarrassment. I think that anyone who judges you is anyone who's jealous and wishes they were doing it too. And I think that, you know, you've kind of got to like be bullish if you want to do it and just try and block that out. It's a hard thing because you actually seem to care, well for me, I seem to care more about like what people that know me think versus strangers, but I think that it's a really appealing thing to have followers and all the, the amazing things that come with that. So if you wanna do it, just do it and know that people who love you and support you and care for you are gonna support it and they are gonna vouch for you and the people that are going to judge you should not be in your life so just get going um and then someone asked do you have any tips for getting into the industry especially when there is so much competition i think just understanding that everyone has their own angle everyone has their own perspective like there are so many people doing what i do so many similar people so many of them are actually my friends which is even like funnier um, and I think that you just have to keep really being yourself in whatever you do, whether it's like posting on social media, whether it's your work, whether it's the things that you're interested in, try and be yourself and do exactly what you want and do it in exactly your own style. There have definitely been moments where I've seen what other people are doing and thinking like, oh my God, I should smarten my work up. Like I should make it a bit more formal. I should make it a bit more curated, all of this stuff. But I actually know that now I've managed to find a way of doing things that feels very authentic to me and that's when brands and people will come to me specifically for what they want. So I think, yeah, just blocking it out and getting on with it and, and doing it your own way. Next question is, perhaps a bit about how you built relationships before collaborating, how do you build relationships with brands? So yeah, I think this is also really interesting. Um, Building a relationship with a brand is definitely a long-term thing. Like, I think that people see you working with a brand or getting gifting from a brand or even doing a paid partnership with a brand and think that it's, like, just happened like that. But there's a long process that plays into that. And also, brands 
you know they do come to you which is amazing but there's there's a lot of legwork that goes in like I might have contacted someone my agent might have contacted someone um I might have them on a wish list and then get the thing and be like I'm working with them so it doesn't just happen um I think that if I'm also just looking down at my laptop because I've made notes on all the questions um I think that if you want to attract brands using their products using their clothes if it's a clothing brand using their kitchen products um whatever it is before you want to work with them tagging them in your content tagging them in your posts making sure that you're you know putting yourself out there to attract their attention and they will be attracted to you if you're right for their brand and also if you're conscious and you've got the right understanding of the world through their eyes so i think you know, understanding that it takes a long time. Um, before you collaborate with a brand, this, yeah, there's a long, there's a long process and I guess there's three parts of it to break down. It's like initial organic content. So say I wanted to work with Uniqlo, I am actually wearing Uniqlo cardigan right now. If I wanted to work with Uniqlo, I would have this cardigan and I bought the cardigan and I love it and I've worn it loads and I post photo of the cardigan on my Instagram and I tag Uniqlo and they see it and they like the photo and they and I'm kind of on their radar and they're like hmm yeah we like that we've seen her post our stuff a couple of times then I get an email from Uniqlo a few weeks later saying we would love to send Xanthia a few things from our latest range like tell me if you're interested and I'm like oh my god that's so cool I've wanted to work with Uniqlo I've been like putting it out there to work with them so I will work with them and I will get gifting from them, which is really exciting. And then I'll post the gifting and I'll tag them in the gifting. And then I will, a few months later, have an email saying we're working with six ambassadors on this like six month long program. And we'd love to work with Xanthi. It's a paid opportunity. Like, are you interested? And then that's like, you've ticked the boxes because you've built a really organic relationship with a brand that you genuinely love and bought before and you've converted that into a paid opportunity. So I think that's kind of how it works, is like these things are long-term, they could go on for a year, they could go on for longer, um, but building relationships with brands kind of works like that. And also as you grow and um, people are more aware of your page, even if it's not that big a number, then you're just on people's radars there are so many people going around there are so many brands there are pr companies everyone's just finding new people all the time so even if you don't have a big following like you could get noticed so easily like under ten thousand. okay i need to like move faster because i have so many more questions to answer um next question is what makes you feel the most stressed as an influencer slash what is the worst thing about being an influencer I liked this question just because it is quite an obvious um, question, a, a good question, but like there are obviously bad parts of being an influencer. Being an influencer is amazing. Like I feel so lucky every single day. I think that I had no idea when I started my Instagram how I was going to be able to build a complete, an entire career out of posting and the things that it's led me to. I'm. I'm also now like cooking as my main thing. It's not just that I'm posting, I'm cooking, I'm doing what I love. And I feel like, yeah, I just, I feel so lucky. Um, I feel grateful every single day. And I know that that is such a cliche, but I genuinely do. Um, when I'm going to events with brands, when I'm working with brands, all of these things, I just like, I literally pinch myself every day. So I will say that as a disclaimer. I think the, the, the thing that the negatives could be perceived as, um, you can be really hard on yourself on social media. So I think you can set yourself milestones and figures that you want to achieve. And as soon as you achieve those, it's just like, what's next? Next big thing. And I guess this is kind of like anything in life, but with social media, you really see the figures and the numbers are very, like you just go and, and you're like, oh, I hit that, okay, what's next? It kind of feels like anticlimactical. Also the same goes with brands, like there are these brands that you could have never dreamed of working with and then you work with them and you're like, oh, I want more. So it's very like more, 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 which I think is a negative side of it. 
The next thing is comparison. Like, of course, there, as I mentioned earlier, there are so many people doing similar things. People working with brands that you want to work with or people just doing similar things to you, getting jobs that you wanted, um, getting jobs that you would like. And I think that the comparison thing is really hard. You're seeing people not only doing really cool things all the time, but you're also seeing people go, 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 create all this amazing content, wear these amazing outfits. Like, you think, I think sometimes maybe as a, someone who isn't an influencer, you probably, you could look at influencers and think they've like got it all so they don't need to feel comparison to other people. But actually it's kind of more intense because you're like, I should be doing that, I should be doing that, I should be doing that, I should be doing that. And this year I kind of haven't really had time to create content for the purpose of Instagram. I've kind of been posting things like that I've done, you know, I've cooked all of this stuff. Whereas before I was posting, for the intention on social media. So I'm like looking at all these people and thinking, oh my God, they're doing so well, they're doing this, they're, they're creating so much amazing content. Like recipe videos for me is something that I want to do and I never have time to do. And I see all these people doing like five a week and I'm like, oh my God. So I get that. And then I feel like, yeah, you you kind of just have to be constantly moving forward and creating new content and being creative with it and making sure it lands well and I think that the being constantly on I find sometimes tiring. I've had like really good boundaries put up with social media this year and that a lot of weekends I take off even if it's just a day, not the whole weekend. I don't really go on it on evenings. Um, I try and use it like within working hours but you are constantly on and I think one thing that is like I haven't struggled, I've just been thinking about recently is like people that know me in my personal life or not even know me like are friends with me but ha have come across me or know a friend who knows me and I meet them or like they, I, I'm trying to explain this, it's kind of a weird one to explain but like I almost feel self-conscious when I meet people who are like I follow you on Instagram and I kind of know them through so and so I just I feel quite self-conscious about it but I don't really know I think that's something I just need to work on because people are so nice and supportive but I guess it's like putting you're putting yourself out there all the time and you're putting yourself out there to be judged and I'm really lucky I don't get a huge amount of negative comments or messages or anything but I kind of create this dialogue sometimes in my head where I'm anticipating negativity even though it's not happening um people saying like oh my god you do this you do that you have like this you have that so I think the anticipation of judgment is something that I really feel um and that's probably like my biggest negative about social media all the other stuff I kind of work through and you understand is like everyone is feeling um who works in social media in some capacity but the kind of fear of judgment of people is something that i really want to work on and i am working on it and i love it also the one other thing i'll say is like constantly feeling constantly feeling like you need to be creative i love being creative i love coming up with new ideas but there is so much noise on social media that sometimes it's like what do I do? I have to post. I don't, know, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to post. I keep should be posting consistently. I don't have anything to post. Looking through my camera or feeling like, uh, but I also try and stick to the thing of like, I only post when I have something to post and when I'm really proud of it and when I feel like the world wants to see it. So that's all. Anyway, that's all on being an influencer. Maybe we can come back to these kinds of questions in the future if it is really something you're interested in. Okay, next section, we are moving through these quicker now. Next section is cooking. Um, so how to build and maintain a range of cooking techniques. I love this question. So this is something that I am 100% still working on and will be working on for many, many, many years to come. I think that again, there's a perception of like people on social media or people cooking as a job, like there, they know it all, but they do not. I do not. I have so much to learn. I'm learning every day, every week, every month. A couple of ways that I've really, really learned is working in restaurant kitchens. For me, this long term wasn't something I wanted to do because the lifestyle of it was just like not suitable for me. But um, 
I have done stages, which is where you go and work in a restaurant. You could go for a day, you could go for a week, you could go for a few weeks. I've done month long stages and that for me has been really, really amazing learning experience. Um, but it's not that easy to take out a month or a week or a few days of your life. So that's like maybe not the easiest. YouTube, like I've learned so much from YouTube, even if there was if there was a specific technique I wanted to learn or it was a specific recipe or specific style, there is so much to learn from YouTube. I'm such a visual learner, so I love seeing the way that people do things. Um, so definitely YouTube, I'd say obviously reading cookbooks. I think that methods in cookbooks can teach you so much. The way that recipe writers write about certain ways they do things and techniques you can learn so much from and also I would just say like keep trying things keep trying the th same things over and over and over again guys to make my like chocolate mousse recipe which people go crazy for I swear I made it like 20 times um and things go differently every time and you learn something you learn how eggs whisk what time like how eggs change with sugar when you add that like keep trying things over and over and over and over and over again and then just try new things so try making something that you never thought you'd try and you'll learn things about flavour combinations so yeah just keep experimenting and um, know that like a lot of the ways that you can learn to cook these kinds of things are free on the internet so use that obviously Instagram and TikTok are full of so many valuable people that um, have amazing recipes and techniques and everything so read those Someone said, how do you balance making food related content on Instagram and creating new ideas for supper clubs? Do the two ever compete in clash? Yeah, so I think that this is something I've definitely struggled with this year. I touched on it earlier, but I haven't really had time to like make content for Instagram. Um, so I think that I would love to separate this more, but I think the way that I do it right now is like, obviously my Instagram is more full of recipes that people could cook at home for lunch for a quick dinner is like more accessible recipes whereas I guess for my supper clubs I'm thinking about how things look visually how things sit on a plate how the menu chimes together so like I mainly cook vegetarian for my supper clubs and how all the dishes can impact one another like I don't do it start a main pudding I do it kind of a series of dishes coming out and forming a meal um, and how they all combine and wh which ones have like a more filling version of each other and which ones feel more like light nibbles um, and how they're all tied together and obviously I'm like super into really creative fun puddings so that's always something I'm really thinking about when I'm doing my supper clubs is like how can I create something that's really impactful and visual and crazy and fun and doesn't look too serious so pudding is really exciting for me and that's something more in the supper clubs that I feel like I can mess around with a lot and then obviously I just post it on Instagram so those kind of combine but I'd love to make more time which is definitely an aim for like this half of my year half quarter of my year to <clears throat> excuse me to get um more proactive on creating content specifically for Instagram um and then someone said how do you find work as a private chef slash event chef any tips for newbies in the industry how did you get started cooking and catering so i was really lucky because my supper clubs that i was doing that i've been doing for six years um they kind of formed the backbone of the work that i've now been getting as an events chef so i don't do so much private catering but this is something i'm going to be starting to do more of as my team grows um but the events chefing i think it, it's just kind of word of mouth like i was doing the supper clubs and i was doing lots of them and then brands start seeing the supper clubs and they need someone to cater a similar event so they ask me and then other brands see that i've posted on my instagram that i've done an event for a so-and-so brand so it's like word of mouth but know that like everything you do this this sounds stressful but i think it's more just to say like there are tiny tiny building blocks that are involved in I now kind of reflect on the, six, the last six years and hopefully even more so in the next few years and be like, all these little decisions that I made have led me to this point. Like all the supper clubs that I did, the style of cooking, the plates that I bought in France, the like 
times I've worked in pastry section a restaurant, bakeries, all the reading I did of bakery books, like all of this stuff is adding up. So just see it as like tiny building blocks. If you want to get into this, like start posting about the supper clubs you do at home or even like cooking for your family. It doesn't even have to be supper clubs. It just could be like cooking for your flatmates, cooking with your family, just all these tiny things that will hopefully build somewhere. And I feel like I'm only just getting to the point where I can say like, oh, this is all starting to make sense after six years of like grinding hard. Um, so yeah, I think that that is my answer to that question. And then the last section, because I've just really tried to compact these and make sure it doesn't go for too long, is like just miscellaneous general stuff. Um, so someone asked, do you get overwhelmed with working constantly? If so, how do you manage it? I do get really overwhelmed and I struggle with this literally daily. Um, I love working and I love my work, so I'm guilty of taking on too much but I genuinely, in my day-to-day -day life, feel overwhelmed literally every day. So yeah, I don't manage it well. <laughs> I'm working on it and I always am working on it and I do loads of stuff to help me work on it. Like I do my journaling, obviously. I do a lot of like breath work and I have lots of aromatherapy oils and everything and all of that like calming stuff. I do therapy, which really helps. Um, just understand my thoughts I do cognitive behavioral therapy so it's like understanding my triggers and how my brain works and what makes me feel anxious and I try to really be organized about my work I'm like militant about my calendar I have lists everywhere like lists every day of what I need to do um, I'm really on top of so I think it's something that I'm definitely trying to manage I think the one thing that I've really been telling myself recently and Hugo is actually really good at teaching me this as well it's like you're never gonna get to end the end of the day the end of the week whatever it is and have completed everything you need to do like that doesn't exist unfortunately but also fortunately because work's constant and it's exciting and it's growing so try and get as much as you can done every day and if you don't get that done you're gonna get it done tomorrow just get the things you need to do prioritize them get as much of the other stuff you can done and then think about the, the rest of the stuff tomorrow which I think is such good advice um but yeah that's no yes I am overwhelmed and yes I do not handle it well and I don't feel like I've got my shit together at all so yeah <laughs> um how do you build discipline and motivation in your working life I think that I am naturally very disciplined and motivated and ambitious so these are things that I've always found quite easy I get up really early and my working hours are like most other people's from about nine until about six sometimes I work late start working later because I really faff around in the mornings sometimes I work later in the evening sometimes I finish earlier but I will generally have like a full working day um because I also really love my work and I love what I do so I don't struggle with motivation if anything I need to be a bit more and I this is something I've been telling myself I need to be a bit more like I'm knackered and I had a really intense week last week I'm gonna take this morning off and lie in bed for longer and go do a workout class or go take my dogs on an extra long walk or go get myself a pastry I'm gonna like take some time but instead I feel almost like I have to prove that I work as hard as everyone else so I'm like at my desk all the time and that's a bit um silly but yeah I don't struggle with discipline and motivation but I think if you do the answers in my previous answer I feel like they might work well for you like just trying to have a routine trying to write lists being really organized all that kind of thing and knowing that like ultimately if I don't work then I don't get paid so I kind of have to make it happen for myself um, okay, this is getting really long, so I'm gonna try and wrap it up. Um, making connections in the industry. I go to a lot of events, which again is as a result of social media and hasn't always happened. When I go to events, I really try and talk to as many people as I can, and I try and see new people, and if there's someone I specifically wanna to talk to, or a brand, or the PR, then I'll always try and talk to them. Also just Instagram, Instagram friends, um, messaging people that you insp are inspired by and like and just forming relationships with people who you genuinely connect with I think is really important. All the people that I connect with online and in real life like are people that I genuinely really respect and admire so 
yeah i think that being authentic and making sure you're connecting with people that you really want to connect with and not just people you feel like you should how do you edit your reels what's your method i edit my reels in an app called splice s-p-l-i-c-e i pay for it it's really good i find it really user friendly it's on my phone i make my voiceovers on there and then i transfer it to instagram where i will do captions and then i post it so splice that is it but there's loads cap cut final cut pro there's loads of other ones but that's one i like the last one i'm gonna answer is what are your plans for the future beyond influencing which i really like so i feel like that just wraps everything up um i'm working on a lot of things at the moment and i feel like i don't want to be that annoying person that's like watch this space but honestly watch this space um i'm working on an events and catering company which is really exciting so i can take on more of that and i would love to get just cooking more basically um cooking more recipe writing um i had have a space someone did ask would you like to have your own restaurant one day um i would love to have a space of some kind so that's something i'm working towards a studio where i can host people and like be open certain days of the week i just want to cook and i want to share my journey on cooking and things i'm inspired by but like cooking is my ultimate goal so that's what i'm working towards and um thank you for being here and allowing me to do it i really appreciate it and i hope that that was useful and you found yeah i hope that you found that useful basically and i will see you soon thank you for being here lots of love Mwah.